Attention! Listen up! The biggest mistake Yuktabania has made in their blitz attack is that it had failed to sink any of our aircraft carriers. We'll evacuate all intact carriers to our inland sea, then use them as a base to rebuild our counter-strike force. You've been called to service and a very important operation, people. Keep that in mind out there. Today at 1500 hours, three carriers from the 3rd Ocean Naval Fleet will rendezvous at Eaglin Straits. These carriers are the Vulture, the Buzzard, and the Kestrel, which has successfully escaped from Port St. Hewlett, thanks to your help. Your mission is to coordinate with the Kestrel and provide top cover for all carriers during the rendezvous. Should you encounter enemy attack, defend the three carriers at all costs. The situation is fluid. So be sure to choose an aircraft with good defensive capability against both air and ground-based threats. It was nothing. Easiest mission in the world. That's what it was supposed to be. It wasn't just us, but everyone they could get their hands on. General mobilization. Our planes filled the sky like a huge aluminum cloud. There was no way the enemy could attack. The Queens of the Ocean made it to the Inland Sea. We've got it made in the shade now. This is Thunderhead. We've arrived outside the range of enemy air attack. Permission granted to return to your assigned bases in sequence. Aircraft may refuel for the return trip if required. Hold above the carrier for the tanker aircraft. Everyone's starting to leave. Can we go yet? Wardog Squadron, I told you to wait for the tanker plane above the carrier. I swear, man. It's showing up on mine, too. Where'd it come from? How come the morons at Thunder Blockhead didn't notice it? Yo, Booby! You have to call him Captain now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you think we ought to report this? <laughs> Enemy approaching! All units, return to your combat air patrol stations! Protect the carriers! We have three carriers. Don't let them sink even one! Chopper engaging. Archer, engaging. Edge, engaging. I can't take off. Shoot down those enemy planes for me. Okay, I'm coming. Hold on. Watch out for the reefs. Hurry and launch the carrier jets. You're not getting off that easy. They're circling in again. Not this time. Visibility is poor. It's the perfect time and place for a surprise attack. Yeah, I can't help but feel like everything's working against us. 
missile incoming. Damn it. Listen up. If you want to survive, then climb above 5,000 feet before that thing hits. All units, move it. Kestrel, evasive action. What do we got to do, Booby? I'll follow you. Look out, they're back. Emergency climb. Are they sure it's 5,000 feet? Omega-9, climb quickly. This is Archer. Roger. I'll follow you, Captain. Currently at 3,000 feet! People are spilling off the decks! There goes another ship! Hurry up and climb! I can't. Ten seconds to next impact. Eight. Seven. The enemy attack squadron has withdrawn from the area. The aircraft carriers Vulture and Buzzard were sunk by a powerful burst missile attack. According to hydrophone data analysis, we have determined that the attack was carried out by the Sinfaxi, a Yuktobanian underwater attack carrier. The specs of this ship are unknown, but its existence confirms that the advanced shipbuilding efforts of the Yuktobanians have been going on unabated since the previous war. The Synfaxi is a serious threat to our objectives. Emergency transmission from Central. Our army has decided to deploy the military power of the Arkbird to neutralize the grave threat posed by this new enemy submarine. We set off for the northern region to refuel. This place is paradise compared to what's further ahead. Beyond our destination lies the closed gate to Nord Belka. Fifteen years ago, the Belkans set off seven nuclear bombs there to stave off the advancing Allied forces, entombing themselves in the frozen valleys to the north. That bit of history should have been enough of a lesson for us all. The seven Belkan cities near the gate were vaporized, and the local area is still highly radioactive. Our landing point was in the state of North Osu, formerly a haven for Belkans, but now entrusted to Osu. If you refer to it by that name in front of a local name, I'll put a scowl on his face and tell you that this is South Belka. Higher Lark meant a lot to us. Our flight training took place here on this airfield. On the base, we were surrounded by junior cadets, eager to hear war stories. 
The newspaper article about us written by that journalist Jeanette made it here faster than I did. Somewhere along the line, we had become the most experienced pilots in the entire world. Thus, Captain Bartlett's made us. We were directed to take these inexperienced pilots back with us to Sand Island when we returned. You said it. These pilots had only a tenuous grasp of flying, much less mid-air refueling, so we had to land at every base along the way. I can't believe we have to send them off to guard the western coastline. 